Hello everyone, how's it doing? It's been a long time since I've done a vlog. The last one was on Christmas Day when I was actually building the, constructing this telescope. So it's been a while, I've posted a few videos on the channel. Um, weather's not so good at the moment, so I thought I'd do a quick vlog about something that may help people who are interested in this telescope in particular. I want to talk about finder scopes. So these are the two scopes at the minute in the office here. The one here, that's my uh, Schmidt Cassegrain design. That's a Mead LX10 Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. That's a compound telescope made of mirrors and and lenses with a light system gets folded up inside several times. You get a long telescope and a short package. So it's a good general purpose telescope. This is a different design. This is an Atonian reflector uh, designed by Isaac Newton and popularized to great effect by astronomer John Dobson. You can actually build these yourself when made if you know what you're doing. So these are the two main types. So the reflector, this is the new one. But the, I'll get to the point of what I'm talking about first before I show you what, what's going on here. Uh, if you're kind of new to this stuff, um, every telescope comes with a finder scope. A finder scope is a device that attaches to the top of the main instrument. And uh, it helps you locate your target in the sky, whether it be a star, a bright star, a planet, whatever, an area of the sky where it might be a deep sky object. Most of the finder scopes, well, they come in two different types. They come as an optical viewfinder or a reflex sight. And an optical viewfinder actually looks like a miniature telescope. You often see them on top of telescopes, like a smaller tube. When you look through that smaller telescope, that viewfinder, there's a crosshair on it that you can project against the stars and you can see where you're aiming. So you align your finder scope up with your main telescope. Pretty easy to do with some thumb screws and things like that. And uh, you do that during the daytime or during twilight. Say you pick a bright object on the horizon or an obvious object on the horizon, maybe like a distant tree or a telegraph pole or a chimney miles away. Line your finder scope on that. Look for your eyepiece. If you can get the object centered in your eyepiece, adjust your finder scope so it's the crosshairs are on it, then your telescope is aligned with the finder scope. So the next time you go out under the stars, you'll be able to look at, say, Capella, and the Capella should be in the low power eyepiece, your field of view. And the other type of telescope is, or sorry, a finder scope, is a reflex sight. A reflex sight is a one magnification device. The, the optical viewfinders tend to be an eight magnification, anything from five to eight, sometimes rarely ten. They're almost like a single binocular, so there's some magnification involved, you know, which is really cool. But the reflex sights are one magnification, so they're just the same as the naked eye. But they differ in that they don't have an optical system set up. They just have perhaps a plate mounted with a red uh, laser sight on it. It's not so much a laser sight, it's more of a, a red dot. The red dot is projected onto the glass plate. And just like before, you align it with the stars with the main telescope. And it helps you find objects. I personally prefer the reflex sights myself from years of using them. As you can see in my old telescope here, I don't even have any finder scope on it. I actually use it without a finder scope, just lining it up. And I have a pretty good success rate with it. But eventually I would like to get something on it. But to the point of this video, I'm going to switch the camera now away from me and show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so this is the Mead Lightbridge. 10 inch Dobsonian reflector, the trust tube Dobsonian reflector from Mead Instruments, which I got for Christmas. And of course, it came with a reflex sight, not an optical viewfinder, but a reflex viewfinder. And this is it here. So I'm going to lift this up to show you. This is the one that came packaged with the telescope. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Uh, I have to say, first of all, this is not made by Mead, this is a different company. But it comes supplied with the with the instrument. The problem I've noticed is I don't get me wrong. I'm not moaning, not belittling any company or anything like that. But I have a grievance, uh, <laughs> a frustration about this site, which I feel is very important for anyone who's invested in these telescope or going to buy one. You might want to hear what I have to say. This reflex site that comes with a telescope, in my opinion, based on my own experience, is rubbish. Now, it's pretty heavy, it's metal, it feels like really good quality, right? The battery goes in here, you know them large watch type batteries? That goes in here, I hope this phone focuses all right, in here. And you can adjust that ring to project, or to alter the brightness of the red dot on the glass plate, and you can adjust the shape of the dot to a cross, 
a dot or a larger circle using this switch at the back here. And the idea is if I if this was projected on my old telescope, the idea is you have it on here, when it's switched on and lined up, you look through this viewfinder here, this glass plate, just one magnification, and you'll see the red dot on it. Then you move the telescope, point the red dot at a star, and then the actual star should be centered in the field of view of the eyepiece. That's the idea of it. This telescope came with this, <laughs> this mount, and I'll be quite brutal, honestly. Absolute trash. I'm not going to name the company. You can easily find out who you want. The structure manual came with this and uh, said a lot of great things about it, but no. This, first of all, I'll get to the reason why. First of all, this here needs aligned with the main instrument as I described earlier, but it's not an easy thing to do. And here's why. Yeah, look at this. I'm holding this up close. There's, Allen key here. You have to use an Allen key for one, and you're out in the twilight or night time with this mount on your telescope, and you're using an Allen key to make slow adjustments up and down two different locations to move that red dot to get it aligned with the stars with the main telescope. I'm telling you that is not an easy thing to do. The problem I found was that no matter what way I moved the Allen key, the red dot wouldn't move properly in the way it should do, and often the telescope itself would move. And the process because it's so stiff and no matter what how much i adjusted those allen keys the red dot would not move to the position i needed it to move it wouldn't move at all actually uh it was out by four degrees which is really poor and i thought maybe i got a dodgy one but no my mate john fagan he has the exact same telescope way before christmas exact same finder scope on it and he said the same thing really cumbersome to align and it wouldn't align properly and you actually gave up on it and you replaced it uh, so another problem is the battery in here it's it's rubbish as well i'm using that word quite <laughs> quite strongly tonight but i'm just telling you the truth the battery doesn't have no has no life in it at all it just goes dead very quickly so we thought maybe maybe it's just the battery came for it. it's been sitting in it a while so we replaced it with a brand new battery from a good company died again, no no life in it whatsoever. Uh, not just me, John said the exact same thing. His died on him, battery wouldn't last, replaced the battery, died on him again. Doesn't even stay on enough for one observing session for an hour. Battery just goes flat. So this is actually useless. So what I did, and John too, is we removed the finder scope. I have it sitting on the desk here, and I've ordered my old favorite type of reflex sight. The Telrad. And this is what I recommend you get. If you're interested in a reflex sight for any telescope, or if you own this telescope and you want to replace that crappy finder, get this. This is the Tel Telrad reflex sight. I used to use these years ago all the time. I had one on the 8 inch, I had one on my 16 inch Dobsonian. They are incredible. Far easier to use, far more reliable. So I'm going to show you a close up of it. So what it does, it comes in a plate here with like a sticky adhesive strips on it and you just stick it onto the telescope and it holds the plate in position and using these two screws here you can quickly just unscrew these here and just lift the whole unit out and put on an R telescope if you want or just take it off for storage it's very quick and easy to put on and attach very easy honestly it's fantastic and also it's powered just by two AA batteries and I know from experience from using these years ago I've used this this reflex sight for a year and the battery never went dead on it. Isn't that incredible? And this, that's consistent with any teller that I've owned. And then you get to the easy part. You turn it on here with the switch. I'm going to put it to maximum brightness. I don't know if you see it easy. You need a night, a dark sky to see it. You know what? Turn off this light and I can There. You see that? That's the ring. The large outer ring is four degrees, the inner ring is two degrees, and the smaller ring is half a degree or 30 arc minutes. So that's your three scales there. So I'll turn this light back on again. I 
And the, and the easy part is, you, so that's how easy it is. You just switch it on with one switch. You're not fumbling around with tiny little metal mechanisms in the dark, which is really impossible to do. And you have three adjustment knobs in the back of the Telerad here. And you just adjust all three like that with your hand, just rotate these knobs and it moves the red circle up, down, left, right across the glass plate. And you have it aligned literally within seconds. That's how fast it is. So if I center a bright star on the eyepiece here, say Sirius, which is the brightest star in the night sky in the winter time at the minute, low in the southeast. Put Sirius in the eyepiece field of view at the center. Quickly go around to the back of the Telerad, check where the red circle is. If it's not on Sirius, I adjust the three knobs quickly. It'll move left, right, up, down. Put Sirius at the center of the half degree circle. That's it aligned, literally within seconds. So if I go out to find something else, say I want to find the Andromeda Galaxy, you can see the Andromeda Galaxy has a smudge with the naked eye. I move the Telerad across, put the red dot onto the smudge. Andromeda Galaxy will be visible in the eyepiece. That's how quick it is. It's very quick, it's very simple, and it's efficient. It handles uh, the weather very well. It handles uh, the battery life is phenomenal. It's an old device, but they're well worth the money. I got this online. I think it was over forty pound or so. They are quite expensive, but they're worth their weight in gold. So I'd highly recommend anyone who wants a reflex sight for the telescope or a reflex sight even to complement their optical viewfinder for any telescope or this brand, get a Telrad. Phenomenal. Easy to take off. Easy to adjust within seconds, as I said. Very bright uh, reflex sight with the different degrees on it. And you can adjust the brightness of that circle and you can move it around pretty quickly. So, a wonderful device. Simplicity at its finest. And I'm telling you, your observing will become far more efficient. So what I might do is, I'll probably buy an R base plate. You can buy these base plates, the Telerad's on, separate. I'll attach one side. You can see my old telescope. I have the marks here. It used to have a Telerad. You can see the classic the shape of it. I'll buy a new base plate. Then I can take that Telerad off. Put it on the 8 inch anytime I want to use it as well. So that's my advice. My tips for today. Get a Telerad reflex sight. If you own the Lightbridge range of telescopes. My recommendation is forget about that. Maybe yours, maybe John and I both got unlucky. Maybe you just got a dodgy one. I don't know. Perhaps I said in the instruction manual this is also useful for uh, airsoft guns, and it probably is actually pretty good for that. But it's unreliable. It's cumbersome. You can't use it in the night. Imagine using Alan. I was actually using an Allen key in two areas in this in the dark in the back over Christmas trying to line this. It's ridiculous. It's just not practical. Whoever thought of this didn't think of efficiency, you know what I mean? It's, it's not really designed for astronomy in my opinion. But uh, that's my advice. I would replace that. Get an optical viewfinder or, or a tail rod, whatever works for you. So that's really it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative. Excuse just a quick way of being here in the room. I still have to get this room done up. I'm going to hit that in the springtime. But uh, that's my advice for any telescope. If you have an optical viewfinder and you get a, you know it works for you, then great. You don't need anything else. But if you want to complement it with something that can find objects very fast with no magnification, then get it. Get a reflex sight, specifically a Telerad. If you own this telescope, this me Lightbridge brand, replace the one that comes with it and get a Telerad or another reflex type sight. There are others on the market. Now I can't comment on those other ones because I've never used them. I've only used this and the Telerad, so I can only talk from experience with the Telerad. It is bigger and more cumbersome than some of the smaller devices out now. But it's reliable, it does what it says in the tin, and I, I know from years of experience of working with these in all the weather conditions, I mean, this thing will get soaked with dew, rain, snow, hailstones. You know, I've had it out in all conditions for hours, and it still works. The battery still lasts for ages on it, you know, you can't ask for anything better than that. So get one, if you get one online, sometimes you get a second hand one on eBay or Amazon. Look out for a deal, but I highly recommend them. I really, really do. So that's pretty much it. Uh, it's fairly quiet at the minute. I uh, had a few snow scenes last week here in Northern Ireland, but it, we've had terrible weather since with a lot of rain and grey days and muzzle. You know, it's just not, not been very nice. But there's an hour cold spell coming the latter half of the weekend and the next week. The press are calling it a beast from the east. It may be for some areas, but for us, it probably won't be a beast. But it will be coming from the east and it will be cold. So I'm waiting to see if there's going to be any snow or any uh, cold weather or ice photo ops from that. 
so we'll see see what happens closer to the time so thanks everyone for watching the video hope you're all keeping well and uh, hopefully i have some new videos out soon